Hi everybody and welcome to this fly tying tutorial. The fly that I'll be uh, tying today is called a semi-seal leech pattern. It was created by John Romer. Uh, this is a really great pattern, especially for those people that enjoy still water fishing, uh, being that it represents leeches in the water. Uh, I have a hook already in my vise right now. I put a tungsten bead on the, the front of it, and I really do prefer beads on this pattern. Uh, there's many variations of putting the bead on it and, and its actual location, but we don't have to really get into those for the sake of this. Uh, but I really do like that bead because it really gives it that jigging type action. Uh, this pattern will frequently be fished on a you know type 2, type 3 sink tip line. Um, just to ensure that it's really getting down, uh, you know, down in that zone of where the fish are going to be located to be feeding off this pattern. And the one key about it is that you really do want that bead, and don't be afraid to oversize it, you know, to ensure that this fly is getting that jigging motion as you're stripping it back to you. What I've decided to do today, I'm going to be tying an actual the semi seal leech, but I'm going to be using white angora yarn, uh, angora goat. I'm sorry. And by choosing white, I really want to stress that this pattern, though it can represent a leech, there's really other options for it, uh, and you can almost use it like a streamer as well, which kind of leads into the, the hook that I'm using today. I'm using the Allen Fly Fishing Hook. It's a 402 BL. It's a uh, basically a 2XL uh, barbless hook. I really like the 2XL because you can really get away with tying some streamers on this on this hook that just aren't as long as you would really you know see it if you go into a fly shop so I really I stress this is a really great hook for tying a little lengthier nymph pattern but also a very nice size streamer pattern to start off with I do want to show you this is probably going to be the semi seal that you will see most often this is a black semi seal let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see this um, I, but I tied this with a mix of Angora and Antron. So this is not just straight Angora. There's a little more flash to it. Uh, I have a, a built-up tail that goes back a little bit longer than the length of the body. And then I also chose to use a, a cone head on the very front of this. Again, because I really want that extra weight at the front. So whenever this uh, I'm stripping this back to me, that extra weight will really help with the jigging motion of this leech. But this black color is the most common semi-seal that you'll see. You'll also see it um, tied a lot in olive. So kind of keep that in mind as I'm tying my pattern that this is more than this is the the one that you will see this is the original this will represent those leeches if you're going straight leech but for my purposes I want to I want to show you how to tie this fly so I want to give you that that background information but I also want to show you a variation of it. So I've already put on some red thread and my tungsten bead. Let me zoom in on this. Okay and uh, my my thread is 6 aught red thread I'm just going straight back. I'm choosing red because you can really see this red body through the white angora, which is what I'm using today. So I'm going the whole way back to where you would tie in your tail, and I'll show you the angora that I'm using. This is called Angora Goat Baby Seal Substitute. The color is natural, so it really takes on a creamy color. I pulled out a clump of it from my the package. You can see there's really just a lot of shine to it. It's a really fine material, but what's nice is there's some length to it as well. If I hold it out, there's a little bit of length that's involved. So you can tie this straight on as the tail. And in fact, there's two ways to tie this on. I'll show you both. Let me zoom back in for you. Okay. When I'm tying in the tail, you have an option to simply tie in your this Angora. I'll just give you, give you the approximate amount you would tie in. So you could tie in the Angora and then just trim whatever's left going towards the eye of the hook. Or you can actually take a little bit of a less amount, lesser amount, something along this line, and tie it in. So I'm just going to do a quick pinch method, tie this in with just a few wraps, and then take all this excess that's going forward and pull it back, and then lock that piece in as well. Now it's truly up to you if you do it that way or if you trim it. Um, it really varies uh, depending on the color that I'm using. For white, I li really like to just do that full back method that I just showed you. Whenever I'm tying black, I like to let that body extend and I actually don't trim it. I just try to build up the body just a little bit. And you can see it on this black one, you can tell that the body gets a little more prominent. But for the sake of the white one, I'm not going to do that. I just did the full back. I am going to build up the body just a hair. Just put a few more wraps of red thread in there and then come back to where I started. Ensure that this tail is locked in, and then move on to the next step. All right, for the next step, I'm gonna be creating a dubbing loop. I have a dubbing loop tool for this, and I'll zoom out so you can see what this tool looks like. This is my dubbing loop tool. 
And these two prongs at the top connect to the thread. So I've connected them right now. Then I've extended the thread towards me. Then I'm going to wrap over, thereby creating a nice little loop. I'm going to take my, my thread back forward, just let it hang, and I'll show you this loop that I've created. So there's a loop of thread with a hole in the center. I'm going to let that hang down, grab my Angora goat, and just start pulling off little chunks. I don't want to go too crazy at all. I'm going to place them within the loop, and my first chunk, I really want to ensure that it gets close to the body. So I'm just going to push that the whole way up, and now that, that Angora is locked in the thread. Okay. So after I have a couple pieces in, I'll put a few more, start building this up, and you have to decide how much you want. For me, it's typically less is more. I don't like to go crazy with this. I really like this to be a translucent pattern. Okay, I'll get a little bit more, and that should be it for now. Now, if you're a beginning fly tire, and you're not really familiar with the dubbing loops, um, the first couple times you do this, you may not put in enough, and you may have to make a second loop, and that's not a problem at all. All right, so here's my loop. It's full of Angora. I have a, a really nice amount in there. It's, it's you know, relatively translucent, just like that, looking at it. And I'm going to start spinning. And by doing this, you're going to start to see these fibers kind of tail out, and they'll be locked within that thread. So I'm going to spin it about 30 times, somewhere 30, 35 times. And then I'm going to stop. I'm going to take my fingernail and just gently pull out some of these fibers with it. Then I spin it another 10 or 15 times. After I see those fibers really shooting out, just like this, I know they're locked in there. They're not really going to be going anyplace. I'm just going to start wrapping this around the shank of the hook. As I make each wrap, I'm going to stroke those fibers back towards the tail, just to palmer them back to ensure that they're all going in that direction that I want them to. And what's nice about this, and I'll, I'll zoom in here so you can really start to see what's going on. That red body is really going to be showing underneath, which is exactly what I want. I believe red can be a trigger for a lot of fish. And I believe showing that red underneath will do so for this pattern. Do you have to use red? No. Can you use white? Absolutely. Can you use a silver tinsel under there? Yeah, go for it. I mean, this is a really a great pattern to just kind of play around with and vary. Okay, I have my dubbing loop to the front by the bead. So I'm just going to lock it off, make a couple wraps. Maybe make a wrap in front. Then I can just simply trim that loop away. Okay, my pattern's not quite finished yet. First thing I'm going to do is just build up the head behind that bead just a little bit. I like to use red again for this part because it really can show off a gill of a streamer if that's what, because that's kind of what I like to imitate with this color thread underneath that white. So I'm just going to build this up a little bit more so than you would probably be used to seeing on this pattern. Okay, that red will almost kind of act as a hot spot too. I put on a half hitch, and I'm doing my whip finish. And more than likely, I will seal that with some type of head cement. All right, so the, my fly is finished in terms of the actual tying. Now I'm going to take just a little piece of Velcro and just start to pull out these fibers to really stretch them out and take the tail, pull that out a little bit. I want to make sure all those fibers are being pulled away from the body whenever I lock them in, in that dubbing loop so that they appear a little bit more translucent and really just show off the profile of this fly. Okay, after I've gone around a couple times, that will be it. I'll show you what this fly will look like once it gets into the water. These fibers will start stroking back and it will really take on that translucent look. You can see that red just really shining through um, exactly what I like to see. And uh, that tail is just a little bit longer than the body length, and that's exactly what you're going for. So that tail will get a little bit more action back there. So this is the finished semi-seal leech pattern that was created by John Romer. I'll show you again. This is a look at one of the black ones. 
with that cone head at the front, and this black was the Angora, the black Angora that was mixed with some black Antron just to give it a little more flash. But if you look at just straight Angora goat, that really just takes on you know a great profile and really just helps this body really just be extremely translucent to the fish. As I mentioned at the beginning, you'll want to fish this on a sink tip, especially if you're fishing it in a saltwater location. And for this pattern too, I will fish this in streams um, locally because uh, this really will kind of look like some of the, the local, the local um, minnows that we have in our waters. Once again, a special thanks go out to Alan Fly Fishing. This was the 402BL, the 2XL Barbless Streamer Nymph Hook, a really great hook to tie this pattern on. Uh, thanks for watching this YouTube video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks everybody for uh, watching this semi-seal leech pattern fly tying tutorial.